Okay, hello folks. I'm just going to try uh, and explain um, how we might use chi-square to look at the current data that we've generated for the eBeam project. And uh, this is our first go at using chi-square on this data. And I'm going to attempt to explain what I think it shows. So we're looking a little at a little subset of data. We're looking at 23 people who answered question one by saying that they weren't able to submit their work on time because the submission process was too complex. So it's their first use of Turnitin and we asked 804 people and of those 804 people, 23 said that they couldn't even hand their work in on time because it was too complex to engage in. So that's good in the sense that there were only 23 of them out of 804, but bad for those people and bad in the sense that of course what we would want is for all of them to be able to submit their work on the first attempt. So we then wanted to look at what happened as they became more familiar with the tool. So we gave them two more goes at handing their work in in this way. So they'd had a failed attempt and then they tried again and then they did another submission and then we asked them what do they think of the process now? So what did those same 23 people think of Turnitin after two more goes of handing it in? Did they think that it was very easy to use, easy, difficult, or very difficult? And what we might fear as an institution that uh, is that of those 23, all of them are still finding it very difficult. And if that were the case, um, we might be uh, worried that the technology was so impenetrable or the guidance and support that we put in place was um, not adequate and therefore they were still finding it very difficult. So normally what you do with chi-squared is to have an expected value but in this, on this occasion what I'm doing is calling that a fear because what we're wanting to do is establish whether the patterns that we see are statistically different from that feared outcome. So it's not perhaps not what we might expect, we don't really know what to expect perhaps, but it's um, something that we want to establish that is not the case and so we're going to statistically measure the difference between the feared outcome and the actual outcome. So we're using fear where you would normally use expected in a chi-square test. So I'm going to show you what the what chi-squared calculates in terms of a chance outcome and what we have here is results um, that could be explained by chance alone. So if these were the results that we actually got, um, they would deviate from the feared outcome by a small enough amount that it could be explained by chance alone. And on the face of it, if we had actually got these figures, you might kind of look at those and say, well actually that looks like things have changed. There were 23 people who found it um, uh, impossible on their first submission, but of those 23, well, only 13 and a half of them, because you can't have half a person, that's what the stats show, 13 and a half of them um, are still finding it very difficult, but five and a half of them have moved a little bit and they're just finding it difficult at this stage. And altogether, uh, four people find it now very easy or easy, so actually things have improved, they've significantly improved. And if we had those results and we said that, on the face of it, you might find that acceptable. But actually, if that's what we had found, those differences could be explained by chance alone. And so they don't show any significant shift in the data from what our fear might have been. So what did we actually see? Well, if you look at our actual results, they're here and what we found that was of those 23, three of them at the end point after two more goes think it's very easy, five of them think it's easy, 11 still think it's difficult and four still find it really difficult. And so what chi-square then does is measure the difference between what could be explained by chance alone and your actual results. And so what you might tend to do as an experimenter is look at your fear and compare it with your actual and see what that difference is. But what you ought to do is look at the difference between what could be explained by chance alone and your actual answers. And that's what chi-square does. And it generates a number and it's a number um, that's smaller than one so it's always a point something. And I'm going to show you what that number 
means and how you can interpret the chi-square score and that's illustrated on this slide and what we've got is a cutoff point of 0.05 and anything between 0.05 and 1 so anything greater than 0.05 and 1 lies in this um, area and what that kind of result in chi-square says is that the deviations of the actual results from the feared outcome can be explained by chance alone and therefore that's bad because it means our fear has been fulfilled or we can't definitely say our fear hasn't uh, um, hasn't been fulfilled but if you've got a chi-square value of less than 0.05 so anything on this side of the line then what you can say is that the deviations of the actual data from our feared outcome can't be explained by chance alone something else is going on there's a statistically significant improvement away from what our worst case scenario might be towards something that's rather more positive so either the students have been resourceful enough to grapple with it and overcome their initial difficulties or the technology is accessible enough that they can learn to use it effectively after two more goes or the guidance and support that we're putting in place is adequate to help cause a significant shift in their perception of the tool over two more iterations and of course that's good because our fear hasn't been fulfilled so if we go back to this data when we apply the chi-square test to it and look at what our actual answers are compared to what we could could be measured through chance alone we come out with a figure of not point not 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 so a very low figure for chi-square and um, and that's good because it means that um, our actual results are statistically significantly different from what we might fear as a worst case scenario.